The Crimean Peninsula, which is under Russian occupation, is at a fever pitch today. Employees of the special services of the aggressor country have increased their activity in the search for Ukrainian saboteurs and the military continues to build an echelon defense near the Kirsch Bridge, fearing new attacks, according to Obozrevetel media outlet. It is noted that Kirsch, or Crimean Bridge, has a special, sacred meaning for the Russian dictator and is strategically important for the Russian army as it connects the occupied peninsula which has been turned into a large military base with the territory of the Russian Federation. For example, in the summer, it was confirmed that the army of the aggressor country, after a break, resumed the supply of fuel by the railway passing over the bridge. Thus, the Kirsch Bridge is undoubtedly a legitimate target for the defense forces of Ukraine, as officials have repeatedly stated. In August, the representative of the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Andriy Yusov, said that a plan had already been developed to destroy the bridge and return Crimea, which in turn caused a real storm in the Russian information space. In May, Russia also began building surface defenses of the Kirsch Bridge, an echeloned system of boom barriers to protect against attacks by Ukrainian naval drones. In June, according to satellite data, it became clear that the occupiers installed a second line of boom fences with 21 barges and began to install piers, the longest of which is about 190 meters. At the beginning of September, photo confirmation appeared that near the Kirsch Bridge, Russia is installing a network of fences made of metal bars which are supposed to protect the concrete supports from underwater and surface attacks by naval drones. Near the bridge, anti-drone protection is also being installed with the help of boom fences and a chain of 33 barges, leaving a narrow shipping passage under the arch. Tetrapods and metal structures similar to anti-tank hedgehogs were also spotted there. Currently in the Kirsch Strait, work is also underway on the installation of metal piles, which are driven into the seabed parallel to the bridge. In addition, in the water area of the strait, combat boats of various classes were seen alternating, as well as cove. According to the Crimeans, the nervousness of the Russian invaders is very noticeable now. Despite their assurances that Russia is here forever, their actions suggest otherwise. In particular, the departure of families of Russian military personnel who discussed among themselves that autumn will be very hot. Continues from Crimea, red with camouflage nets of the anti-aircraft defense system near the fence piers. Yevgeny, a resident of the occupied peninsula, told Oboz Revetel that a new attack on the Kirsch Bridge is expected from day to day. The Russians are especially nervous after receiving information about the activity of British or American strategic reconnaissance planes monitoring Crimea. Immediately, warnings about possible strikes appear in Z publics, which are veiledly called provocations, he said. Russian leader Vladimir Putin has issued a decree to increase the size of the Russian army, which will now number 2.389 million people. Of these, there will be 1.5 million military personnel, which means an increase in the number of Russian soldiers by 180,000. The document comes in force on December the 1st of this year. Consequently, Russia will suffer significant losses on the battlefield and it seems that the pace of recruitment for monetary incentives is failing to meet the Russian military leadership's demand for over 30,000 soldiers per month. Ukrainian military expert Sahi Zaguretz says that this shortfall has caused a sharp increase in compensation for contract soldiers. It is known that one-time payments for signing a contract have risen to nearly 1 million rubles, which is more than $10,000. In Moscow, even up to 2 million rubles. However, in any case, the rate of collecting dead souls in Russia still does not meet the needs. Now, Russia has an extremely high number of casualties and this decree, we can assume, is an attempt to increase the number of contract soldiers. If we are talking about increasing the size of the Russian army, these actions will bring results only in the first half of 2025, because this decree will only increase conscription. In any case, Russia does not have time to quickly provide new personnel with equipment and commanders. Therefore, it is likely to rely on a gradual increase in numbers. Ukrainian military expert Alexander Kovalenko says that Putin's decree 
shows the depletion of equipment reserves and the awareness of the looming crisis in 2025, but such an approach can only accelerate the collapse of the Russian armed forces. Russia does not have and will not have tanks or other armored vehicles for such a number of people. Russia doesn't have nearly that many tanks, and the Soviet army didn't even have that many armored fighting vehicles. Today, the Russian army is already facing problems with equipment which is running out in warehouses, arsenals and storage centers where it has been stored since the Soviet era. That is, in the near future, Russia will be fighting, in the full sense of the word, with marching battalions, battalions consisting exclusively of infantry with a minimal mechanized component. He emphasized, in this regard, the Ukrainian armed forces must now prepare for the fact that the positions of the Ukrainian army will be stormed by numerous human resources which must be destroyed not selectively but en masse in order to save ammunition and reduce the effectiveness of the quantitative factor that is, cluster munitions and area effect weapons are one of the solutions to the emerging problem, he emphasizes. The same FPV drones from the precision strike category will increasingly have to become volume trickily detonating in the air over enemy groups saturated with damaging elements distributed over an area. Putin's decree on increasing the army is a clear sign of the exhaustion of equipment reserves and the awareness of the impending crisis of 2025 associated with the compensation of mechanized losses. But with the right approach, the decision to fight with numbers will only accelerate the collapse of the Russian armed forces. The expert adds, 